Good afternoon, students. Myself, Dr. Divya Ghildeyal, in continuation with my lecture series for AKTU BTEC first year engineering physics syllabus. Today, I will brief you from quantum mechanics, time independent and time dependent Schrodinger wave equation, and the detailed description of one case of Schrodinger wave equation for one dimensional particle in a box. So we have already done Stephen's law, black body radiation, dual nature of light, matter waves. Now today, Schrodinger wave equation. Please remember, this is very, very, very important for your AKTU point of view. Every year, a 10 mark question is asked on Schrodinger wave equation, either the time dependent if it is asked one year, next year you can expect a question on the time independent part of Schrodinger wave equation. What is actually Schrodinger wave equation trying to tell you? Why are you studying it? Because this wave function will tell you about the matter wave. This matter wave, which consists of large number of particles, and it is showing the dual character of wave and particle both, this wave function will help in predicting the position and time of the particle at a particular instant. This help will be given to us by Schrodinger wave equation. So this is what we are studying. One case is a time dependent one and the other is time independent Schrodinger wave equation. So let us begin. Please, this derivation is very lengthy. It will be requiring lots of form basic formulas, which one expects that you should be knowing. But in my lecture, I will tell you all the basic formulas and how Schrodinger equation is derived. My request is please take a printout, which is given to you in the comment section for this lecture and follow me step by step. Let us begin. Wave function of a freely moving particle in x direction. Now listen, matter waves are three dimensional. X, Y, Z, all three. But in our case, in order to simplify it, we will take only the x direction. And then in the end, we will take it for all three dimensions together. So the wave function phi is equal to A, into e to the power of minus i omega into t minus x upon v. Here, omega is angular frequency, which is related to linear frequency as 2 pi mu. And ve velocity v is equal to mu into lambda. We will put these two values in this expression above. So omega becomes equal to 2 pi f or 2 pi mu linear frequency. Velocity becomes equal to mu into lambda. So we put it here. And then this expression becomes phi is equal to a into e to the power of minus 2 pi i into v mu t minus x upon lambda. How did we get it? The omega we have put 2 pi mu and x upon this v we have put as uh, mu into lambda. So the mu mu has got cancelled here and we are left with this expression. Also from Einstein's equation E is equal to h mu and h bar is equal to h upon 2 pi. So h on cross multiplying becomes equal to 2 pi h bar. And from de Broglie equation, we know that lambda is equal to h upon p. So for h, we will write 2 pi h bar here and p the momentum. So now this value of lambda, we will put in this expression here. Now this equation becomes 
phi is equal to a e to the power of minus i by h bar into e t minus p x. Now what we are going to do, we will differentiate this expression with respect to x and with respect to time and simplify it and we get the Schrodinger wave equation. It is very easy if once you understand step by step what is exactly happening. Now, what are we going to do? We will differentiate this equation with respect to x. We will get del twice. We will get del 2 phi by del x 2 formula used is d by dx of x to the power n is equal to n x to the power of n minus 1. So this becomes equal to minus p square upon h bar square phi. Differentiating equation 3 once with respect to t, we get del phi by del t is equal to minus i e upon h bar phi. Now for small speeds, that is according to the mechanics concept, total energy is always equal to sum of potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy, kinetic energy. So what we will do is now in this expression, which we know already, both sides, we will multiply by this wave function phi so that we can write this equation and change it into three dimensional. So what trick are we applying? We are using the basic concept that energy is sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. And both left hand side, right hand side, according to mathematics, we can multiply if the term is similar. So we are multiplying it by phi on both left hand side and right hand side in order to introduce wave function term in my original energy equation. Once we do this, we have just reached Schrodinger wave equation. See, we multiply both sides by E phi equal to P square phi upon 2M plus V phi. Now, let us see equation 4 here del 2 phi by del x2 is equal to minus p square phi upon h uh, p square phi upon h bar square that means i can get an expression for p square phi from here if h square uh, bar i cross multiply and i can get a value of minus i e from here if i multiply cross multiply h bar here so this is exactly what i'm going to do from this and this expression, I will take out I e and I will take out my P square phi and these two values, I will put it here. See, E phi will become equal to minus H bar by I del phi by del T C. E phi equal to H upon I my minus this del phi by del T and P square phi H square del to phi by del X2 here. Now we will put these two values in this expression of total energy. E phi equal to P square phi upon 2M plus V phi. And we get I H bar square del phi by del T is equal to minus H bar square upon 2M del 2 phi by del x2 plus v phi. This is Schrodinger wave equation in time dependent form. Very, very, very important. And if you are want to write it in three dimensions, that is x, y, z, del 2 phi by del x2, del 2 phi by del y2, del 2 phi by del z2. 
and you can use this del symbol here. This is given by second differential del pi by del in all three dimensions and your Schrodinger wave equation in three dimensions becomes equal to minus h bar square by 2m del square plus v whole bracket into wave function phi equal to i h bar del phi by del t. This is very, very important. Quickly, I will tell you now in short how I derived and I reached this expression. It is very easy. You just need to memorize how you write a general wave equation phi equal to A E I naught minus I naught. And in this terms, we introduce energy from Einstein's principle, lambda from de Broglie wavelength, use the concept that total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy, multiply both sides by wave function phi and introduce it uh, by E phi and P square phi in terms of wave function and you get Schrodinger wave equation in time dependent form. And this time dependent form of Schrodinger wave equation is used to explain non-stationary phenomena such as an electronic transition between two states of an atom. Suppose I want the time independent form now. So what will we do? Once again, the steps are similar to what we did right now. This time it will now be very easy for you because now you will be doing it for the second time. Once again, write down the wave uh, equation expression in terms of x and t as phi is equal to a e to the power of minus 2 pi i by h into e t minus p x. The wave function can be separated into space dependent and time dependent parts as a e to the power of 2 pi i p x by h into e to the power of minus 2 pi i e t by h. Why have we done this? We are going to take one component of space dependent that is this x1 and the other the time dependent that is the t1. Now let us see the space dependent. If this phi x, see x is here, x is here, phi x is equal to a e to the power of 2 pi i p x by h, then we can write this here, phi x instead of this here. So this expression becomes equal to phi x t is equal to phi x e to the power of minus 2 pi i e t by h. This, this phi x is exactly actually this value. So instead of this value, I have put this. Again, same trick, differentiate this equation twice with respect to x and once with respect to t using the formula d by dx of x to the power of n is equal to n x to the power of n uh, divide n, n x to the power of n minus one. And both these differential values you put in the time dependent equation here above. Del phi by del t and del two phi by del x two. Exactly this is what you have to do. Put this value here and this value here and you get the expression as minus h square upon 2m d2 phi by dx2 plus v phi equal to e phi. You want, you can uh, combine these uh, expressions which are considering the wave function and write the time independent form as del 2 phi by del x2 plus 2m upon h square into e minus v phi. This you will be using right now when we will discuss the case of particle in one dimensional well. This is steady form of Schrodinger wave equation. In three dimensions, 
only thing you have to do is where you wrote this phi for x, now write it for y and z. So how did we derive the time independent form? We took the general equation of wave uh, function phi and we broke it into one uh, term we took as the displacement, the other we took as time. Displacement term, we mellowed it down to phi x because it is depending only on x. And the t term, we wrote it in terms of that. Then we took one differentiation of this with respect to time and double differentiation with respect to x both these values we substituted in Schrodinger equation derived above here and we got del 2 phi by del x2 plus 2m upon h bar square into e minus v phi equal to zero. This is steady state form of Schrodinger's equation. Now, let me sum it up once again. See, whole story for Schrodinger was that our target was to explain this wave function which could help us predict the motion of this matter wave. In order that we consider this wave function to be acceptable, this question is asked in section A. What are the necessary conditions for acceptable wave function? So the answer is that the wave function should be normalized. This I will explain you in my next lecture. It should be finite everywhere. We cannot take infinite wave function. And it must be continuous throughout the entire state of the system and should be having continuous first derivative. Why did we say this? Because we have differentiated del phi by del x del 2 phi by del x2. So the function has to be a continuous one. If it is constant, then d by dx of a constant quantity becomes zero. So there is no use of taking this. We need it to, it to be continuous. Only then you can take the differentiation. If it is constant, differentiation will turn out as zero and you will not be able to derive your Schrodinger equation. So it must be continuous, it must be finite, it must be normalized. In short, I can tell you that normalized means that particle necessarily is somewhere in the space and the whole integral of that particle in that complete space must be unity. That is integrating my particle in this whole space integral maybe from origin to some point a squaring my wave function with respect to my uh, space d tau should come out as one that means normalized so then this wave function becomes acceptable to be taken for schrodinger wave equation which will help us in predicting the position and momentum of the particle at a particular instant of time. So section A, two mark question, what are the necessary conditions for wave functions to be acceptable? It should be normalized, it should be finite, it should be continuous. What are Schrodinger wave equations predicting or helping us? Schrodinger wave equations are helping us in predicting the motion of this matter wave at time. And uh, uh, one is time dependent and the other is time independent. Thank you.